rugged coastlines, industrial cities, rural landscapes and historic castles, Ulster has a wealth of places to see and explore. For centuries, the coming and going of folk between Ulster and Scotland has left its mark on the landscape and people. I'm Jane Ray, and in this short series, I'll be visiting some of the most stunning visitor attractions we have to offer, which are steeped in Ulster Scots history. Today, we're travelling north of Belfast, along the Antrim Coast Road to showcase its spectacular coastline, which is considered one of the most scenic roads in Northern Ireland. Plus, I'll be showing you a few visitor attractions which are definitely not to be missed. Up until the early 19th century, the region on the northeast coast of Ulster, known as the Glens of Antrim, was largely isolated from the rest of the country. And then a Scot named William Bald was commissioned to build the Antrim Coast Road in 1832. The Coast Road replaced the old Irish highway, and the drive along it allows you to enjoy views of the sea on one side and cliffs on the other. The new road became a lifeline for locals, integrating this isolated area of Antrim with the rest of Ulster. It also, along with the railways, opened up the area to travellers and tourists who continue to enjoy it today. I've just come off the Antrim Coast Road to an area of outstanding beauty called the Gobbins in Island McGee. The peninsula of Island McGee has been a heartland for Irish Presbyterianism for centuries. If you fancy what an Ulster Scots is known as a bit of a dander, you can walk a mile along the cliff top path above the Gobbins. Or you can simply enjoy the scenery from the viewing platforms. On a clear day, you should be able to see Scotland. The Ulster Scots connection is so evident in this area, especially in the names around me. The word burn, for example, is Ulster Scots for small river. And these are words that can be found all over Ulster in areas where lowland Scottish families settled. The Gobbins Burn runs directly under this bridge here. The Gobbins is a dramatic coastal walk along the cliff edge here, where bridges carry you across crashing waves, down into sunken sea caves and along the cliff face. Hello Robert, how are you? I'm very well, Jane. Yourself? Not so bad, not so bad. Well, I'm going to be your guide today. You picked a lovely morning for doing the walk. Couldn't be better. Have you done it before? I've never been here before. Okay, if you just follow me, we'll head round. Go on. So, tell me, Robert, how the Gobbins got its name. Well, the actual name Gobbins was here long before the path. Uh, it's been the name of the cliffs in this area for a long time. One theory is that it comes from two Scottish words, really. We know in this part of the world we talk about our gob or our mouth, which is the first part of the name. And the name for the Scottish mountains is Benz, which would originally have been pronounced Bins. So Gobbin, Gobbins comes from those two words. You enjoying yourself? It's good, yeah, it's brilliant. So this is the first of our bridges. Uh, the old path would have come in around the back here, up the steps, and then would have followed it on around here. In the early 19th century, when the Antrim Coast Road was being built, this section of sea would have been thriving with boats, going from Belfast to Scotland and back and forth. Robert, tell me about what it would have looked like back then. Well, it would have been a very busy waterway. It was actually quicker to go from here to Scotland than it was to go from here to Belfast. Uh, there was quite a lot of traffic with fishing boats coming in from Scotland and fishing in this area as well. Now, because of so much traffic going back and forwards, it does lead to an increase in tourism. That was really the birth of tourism in this part of the world, coming in around the 1820s and 1830s. A lot more people coming across to visit the Antrim coast. It's amazing that they built it back then, like when you sort oh, of think about it. It really was, and that was just for tourism. Yeah. You can see just how clear the water is there amazing. as well. It's 
pretty inviting actually. Aye. Could you, go and swim. you could go for a bob. <laughs> yeah. That's quite nice, so it is. Just be careful on these steps. Yes. Do you stick Quite bits? narrow, yeah. These are called the devil's steps. Oh, aptly named. Aptly named for the devils. They're devil to get down and devil to get back up again. <laughs> In 1954, there was a landslide that caused the pathway to close, and it wasn't until 2015 that it reopened with a series of new bridges and galleries installed. Robert, tell me a bit about these caves then. So, there are quite a lot of caves on Isle McGee. This is one of the best ones that we have on the path. Um, it's called Sandy Cave because of the sandy bottom in it. And there would have been quite a lot of smuggling activity on this coast, as there was quite a lot right around the area. Uh, there were smuggling routes right from the Netherlands, taking in the Mulla Kintyre, the Mulla Galloway, right across to the Isle of Man, so there was quite a lot of activity. One of the first things that would have been smuggled was actually salt. Uh, salt was a very important thing for people back in those days. They used it to keep their food fresh. The idea of the smugglers was that they would have... If the coast was clear, there was a light uh, that showed on the coast here to let them know that it was safe to bring goods in. So they brought them in in small boats and put them in the cave for storage. If there was no light, they knew that it wasn't safe to come in and they would have avoided the coast at all costs. Uh, as time went on, I talked about the salt. There were lots of more high-end goods smuggled, like tea and coffee and sugar, things that were going to make more money out of. Of course, a lot of better brandy and whiskey and things like that would have to come into it as well. So it was quite an important trade. bridge is a bit different. Why is that? Yes, Jane, this is the Tubular Bridge, one of the iconic bridges of the Goblins. It's built in this shape uh, because to replicate the original bridge that was here, which was built from cast iron. Now, the cast iron is a much weaker metal than the present day steel, and it had to be built this way to brace the top and brace the sides, built more or less like a railway tunnel or a railway bridge. It was constructed in the railway yards in York Street and Belfast and brought here by barge. This bridge does not have to have the top on it or the bracing the same as the original bridge. So it's just really an odd to history? It's just an odd to history, Lovely. yes. Robert, over a hundred years later and this is still a hugely popular tourist attraction, what makes it so special? Well, Jane, I think it's because it's unique. Uh, the path runs along the bottom of the cliff, as you can see, so you get a very good perspective of both the cliffs and the birds on the cliffs and the sea and what wildlife we see in the sea. Uh, we have a good selection of birds here. We have kitty wakes, which are a small seagull. We have then got ox, and the ox family includes uh, guillemots, razorbills, and the puffins, which the Ulster Scott vernacular would be the culter neb. Also on the sea, we have seen um, quite a few sightings of seals. We sometimes get porpoise, um, but it's always amazing to see uh, dolphins going past there. They're the really special one that people like to see. This only happens maybe a couple of times a month, but it's a special thing when they happen. There's quite a few other things uh, that can be seen here. We have in the past seen things like minky whales, which go into Belfast Loch. And just where we're standing, one of the days I was here, we saw otters going past as well. So we have a few otters on the coast here as well. But it's nice just to get people down here to see things that they haven't seen before, maybe in their lives. So you're, you're right in the thick of it? And you're right in the middle of it. They're all around you when you're walking around here. So it's great. Well, thank you so much for the fabulous tour. It's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed showing you around. I'm back on the Antrim Coast Road, travelling just over 50 kilometres north from the Gobbins to the picturesque region of Glenariff. The Valley of Glenariff is known as the Queen of the Glens and is one of the nine glens of Antrim. 
Connections between Scotland and this part of Ulster were strengthened as far back as the 14th century with the marriage of Marjorie Bissett, heiress of the Glens, and John Macdonald, Lord of the West Coast and Isles of Scotland. When you come here, you simply can't leave without a visit to Glenara Forest Park. This area of outstanding natural beauty covers over a thousand hectares of woodlands, lakes and conservation areas. The scenic surroundings have made Glenara a tourist attraction since the mid-1800s. The boardwalk which winds through the glen and alongside the river gorge was first built over a hundred years ago and has been carefully reconstructed to provide a spectacular walk. And it's a wonderful way to end my journey along the Antarctic Coast Road.